Good morning, everybody. This is Reverend Essie, and I'm just coming to you to read some word on October, Tuesday, October 5th, 2021. And it's 8.33 in the morning. Amen. What I do is I do, um, let me scoot this over and get to it. I do something every morning. Every morning I do something that I like to call my good mornings. Okay, and I put it on Facebook and um, various platforms. And there it is. I want to read this to you, okay? Um, this, I, I forgot to introduce myself, right? Reverend Essie with morning coffee in heaven with Jesus. And this is a cup that I received, get my big hands out the way, from uh, when I was a secretary down at Mount Olive Baptist Church in Cannonsburg, PA. And they gave this to me on Secretary's Day. I've had this for years. For I think since like 2000, 2005, I think it was. And uh, I've had it ever since. <laughs> Morning coffee. Amen. God bless you. Um, God laid something on my heart uh, about um, imprisonment. And I don't know if some of you have gone through it or you feel like you're going to go through it or if someone that you know and love and care for has gone through it. But um, I saw it in a vision. And so I wrote about imprisonment with my good morning this morning, okay? And this is what it says. I'm reading. I'm literally reading it to you. Um <clears throat> Father, we bless your name and we thank you for loving us and being God all by yourself. There is none like you in the fog and in the rain, <clears throat> in the sunshine and even during our pain. You are with us and you will never leave us nor forsake us. We rely on you every day. You are all that we need. The devil is a liar and we refuse any of his advances in any way. The cup of blessedness through the blood of Jesus Christ and his everlasting love is all that we need. Fill our cups, Lord. We lift them up to you. In Jesus' name, I'm binding the monitoring spirit, every hindering spirit, and every spirit of depression, every evil spirit that tries to stop us from worshiping you, praising you, and fulfilling your will. We are living in this day in the freedom of Jesus Christ, and we thank you. Bless each and every reader of this blog and each and every listener of this podcast and or video. In Jesus' name, your will be done. Amen. And his will be done. God's will is going to come to pass. So we better hop on God's will train and get off of our own. Amen. Do God's will on our own. <clears throat> and then I gave a word and said, God is saying, just as Paul and Silas were in jail and were divinely released, so shall you be. With every wicked situation, God is going to send you favor. Continue to praise him in every situation. Hallelujah. Demons hate praise and worship. Amen. And that's what we need to do. We need to start praising God and worshiping God more. Amen. And then I put the story on from Acts 16. Okay. Acts 16 starts at uh, verse 25, the prison story. I forgot to take a sip. <laughs> Mm. Yummy. I love coffee. <laughs> um, I mean, God bless you tea people, but I love coffee. Acts 16.25, it says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the fountains of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Awesome. This is what God can do for us. No matter what you're going through, God can get you out of that situation. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out a sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. In those days, if you allowed a prisoner to, 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 to leave, if you, you know, lost a prisoner, so to speak, you'd get killed. So he was going to kill himself. Um, wow. Wow. Aren't you glad that Jesus doesn't do that to us today? He's not that kind of a 
master. He's not that kind of a person to um, kill us whenever we don't do things the way he says to do it. Well, you'll end up dying for sure, burning in hell, not dying, but burning in hell. Um, but, you know, he doesn't make us. You accept him or you don't. Amen. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm for we are all here. And I want to add something to this too. Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do, don't hurt yourself. We're still here. How many people today have enemies and, and they hate those people so bad that they'll allow them to kill themselves. In fact, they'll be happy because they did. And what we don't realize is what Paul did, he realized is that's a soul. God loves him too. And this is what we have to realize, especially about our enemies or whatever. They are souls. God loves them too. Jesus died for them too. And then Acts 16, 29 says, Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Now your enemies are going to bow to the Jesus in you. Amen. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must we do to be saved? Now they went from keeping them in the prison to bringing them out asking, how do we get saved? Now see, Paul crying with a loud voice, saving this man's life, caused this man, a couple scriptures down, to want to be like him. Mm. To want to be like him. And this is what we should do in life. I know sometimes things get you down and they aggravate you and agitate you. But don't you just want people to love the Lord like you do? Be a good example. Amen. What must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. They didn't say jump up and down, turn around, spit, yell, scream, and, you know, shimmy shake. <laughs> he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and, and your house. How complicated do we make that today? How complicated sometimes we make getting saved today. Amen. And there are even people who argue over the Romans 10, 9. We call it the Romans road. Different, you know, Romans 10, 9. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe. Amen. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in the house. They gave a little sermon. Amen. <laughs> they, they gave a little word. Hallelujah. And he, they, they gave, they literally preached. You ever go somewhere and you have somebody tell you, oh, um, nice to meet you, but just don't preach to me. You know, I've had people tell me that before. Nice to meet you. Nice people and everything. They just said, nice to meet you. God bless you, but just don't preach to me. And Acts 16, 33 says, and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straightway. When you get down into that sentence, read it again. And he took them the same hour of the night. This is all happening around the same time. And he washed their stripes. He cleaned off the damage that had been done by him or whatever his people. Washed their stripes. Cleaned off the damage that evil had done to God's people. And then he was baptized. It, notice it says he and all his straightway. Okay, people go over that too quick. Not just him. <laughs> but he took some people with him. Amen. He and all his. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Happy. Joyful, rejoicing, praising and worshiping our Father. Amen. 
And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeants saying, let those men go. Uh oh, daytime. Okay, he kept it to himself. He was having such a good time, he kept it to himself. Amen. So the next morning comes. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart, go in peace. The magistrates let them go. The magistrates released them and told them part, go in peace. Amen. But Paul said unto them, they've been beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privily? Nay. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Verily, but let them come themselves and fetch, fetch us out. Yeah, this reminds me of um, sometimes when I pray, I'm praying for you and your family. I'm praying for people, my loved ones. I'll say uh, something like... Um, God cause all of the evil that is hidden, that people think they can't see, cause them to openly repent and apologize. Amen. It would be better for someone to repent and apologize to you publicly. Now, they embarrassed you publicly, but they want to come to you privately to apologize. No. You embarrass me publicly. You come to me publicly and apologize. Amen. That's how I believe. That, that's how I see it. Amen. If you embarrass me publicly, you come to me publicly and apologize. Amen. If you were that bold to intimidate me for everybody to, he to hear and see, you should be bold enough, man or woman enough, to apologize for your actions. Amen. And just like Psalms 90 to 11. I have it written in all my windowsills. Everywhere I go, I write it in my windowsills. It's one, it's, I want to say it's about my favorite scripture. Psalms 90 to 11 says, My eyes shall see and my ears shall hear the destruction upon my enemies. Now, either you can apologize publicly as, as Paul is saying here, uh, no, he said, no, you're going to apologize publicly. Okay? You apologize publicly, or I'm going to watch your destruction. That's not witchcraft. That's not a desire. It's what's going to happen. I will, my eyes will hear about it. My, my eyes will see about, uh, see it. Or my ears will hear about what happened to you. Because you didn't want to apologize for your evil doing. And then Acts 16.38 says, And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. Da, 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 da. <laughs> they beat their own people. Romans. Okay? They beat, they didn't know. You see, they were so busy looking at them because they were Christians preaching the word that they didn't even realize they just wanted to beat them and, and chastise them and throw them into prison for preaching the word and didn't even know they were talking. They were hurting their own people. That's doggy style. That's doggish. To hurt your own people because they love the Lord. My God, that'll pre I can go on and I can go down a rabbit's hole on that one. How many people, maybe even some of you watching, hopefully not, or maybe some of you watching know somebody that has done this to you. But how many people fall out with their own families because they're believers of Jesus Christ? How many people won't come to your house on holidays because it deals it's that Jesus stuff? Your own folks. And let's go further because there's probably somebody watching this right now. Um, how many people uh, who've gone through this, how many people are getting beat and gagged and, and, and cut, striped, murdered, raped, maimed, taunted, 
teased because they believe in Jesus Christ. How many? Their own people. There are some of you out there right now, some mothers and fathers as well, but we know um, what a mother's heart is like, especially after she laid down and had the children. The children came out of her. Or, or maybe even she might have adopted them or something, right? But how many mothers do we know that are laying around every day crying because they have children that won't speak to them, even on holidays or their birthday? Amen. Because they love the Lord. Because the mother loves the Lord. Mother, I'm speaking to you right now. As sure as there's a God above that sky that I'm looking at right now. I'm speaking to you. And I'm telling you, don't stop praying. As much as it might break your heart, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying for your loved one. Amen. Um, we sometimes have to take the sticks and stones, right? We sometimes have to forbear, is that the right word? Sticks and stones. Just like the apostles did. In fact, Paul himself stoned believers and killed believers. He was horrible. Until God called him into ministry, like the rest of us. <laughs> Amen. What? Say that's a Selah moment. Amen. That's a Selah moment. We were all horrible until God called us into ministry. Amen. And Acts sixteen thirty nine says, and they came and besought them, and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. Uh oh, now they want to hide their doings. They, they brought them out. They came and they besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. Lydia. The Bible calls her the maker of purple. See, this is why you people out there that don't believe in women ministries, you better study the Bible a little bit better. There's a lot of women ministers in the Bible. Lydia was one of them. Amen. <laughs> She was a servant of the Most High God. And he went to the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. So that's my message to you this morning about um, feeling imprisoned. Okay, because the devil's busy and he's been doing it to a lot of people. Making them feel imprisoned. Making them feel lonely and um, left out like they don't belong. Always cast down, talked about, talked down to, not respected. It's happening to a lot of people because the devil's mad. It's, it's simple as that. He's mad because we get a second chance and he doesn't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, you want to shorten it up. We get a second chance, he doesn't. It, his, his future in paradise is done. No more. He blew it. Just don't you be like him, okay? Don't blow it. Amen. So, Reverend Essie signing off. I'm glad you guys listen. God bless you. Let's keep, let's keep one another in prayer. Always. And, and, and another thing, too. Let's not dislike somebody so bad. I'm not going through this. Well, if I am going through it personally, nobody told me it, but I've had it happen. But let's not dislike somebody so bad that we can't forgive them and lead them to the Lord. Amen? And um, I pray that somebody else doesn't dislike you so bad that you can't have a decent relationship with them because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. In fact, on that, I'll toast. Amen. God bless you. Amen.
Java Java. Java Java Java. That would be my Java Java dance. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you guys. I love you. But remember, God loves you more.